you will get more opportunities to prove your worth is by being likable. And how are you likable to somebody that you're just really meeting for the first time? It's through rapport building. And how do we build rapport? It's not by us talking. It's by us asking questions. All right, so, so far we've talked about scheduling. We talked about that yesterday. Then we just talked about prospecting. The whole goal, guys, remember, I didn't spend much time talking about this, but what's the entire purpose, our goal, when we do prospecting calls? What's what's our goal? Get the meeting. Get the, get meeting. the meeting. Yep, exactly. That is the only goal is to get the meeting. And so to, now we're going to talk about is what do we do when we're in a – quote unquote, sales meeting, whatever you want, want to call it. Now this works, whether you're in person, this works over the phone, this works on zoom. It doesn't matter, matter how you're doing the call. The, the principles stay the same and the execution of it is the same, whether I'm in person or on the phone or on zoom, I'm going to do it the exact same way. Now, when you can see somebody, you might get some more visual cues and that kind of stuff where you can adjust that you might not get on the phone. Uh, But at the end of the day, the structure is the same. So I'm going to share my screen again. And let's see here. We did that one. And we're going to get into our initial uh, call script. Now, just like uh, the the prospecting, we follow the formula, or I should say the acronym RVA, Rapport Value Asset, a very condensed version. Now, in this version of it, it's a more elongated version, rapport, value, ask. We follow that exact same framework. So instead of a short you know, minute prospecting call, this could be over the course of 30 minutes. Now, when people will say is, okay, okay, I have the three different sections, rapport, value, ask, you know, what's my time allocation to those? Should I be 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 20, 10 minutes, you know, if it's a 30-minute call? And to that, there is no one right answer to it. But generally speaking, if you can, you want to make most of the call the first part, rapport. It's not even the value and ask part. If I am able to have a call with the realtor and I can spend most of our time developing rapport, that's going to set me up for greater success. And why is that? It's because of this rapport. People do business with people they like, especially realtors when it comes to their loan officers. You will get more opportunities to prove your worth is by being likable. And how are you likable to somebody that you're just really meeting for the first time? It's through rapport building. And how do we build rapport? It's not by us talking. It's by us asking questions. And the more we ask questions, the more we get them talking, the greater the rapport that is being built. You may be thinking that, well, they're not even going to know me. Well, who cares about you? We care about them. And the more we talk about them, the more they feel affinity towards you. And so we do that through building rapport. Now, also imagine this is between you and between me, there's a big brick wall. And I can't see you, you can't see me. And we're trying to have a conversation, but it's kind of uncomfortable. I'm not really, you know, seeing you in any sort of way. And I'm, my guard is up. If I want to remove or get that brick wall done, the only way to do that is is by asking questions. Every time I ask questions, it removes some bricks. And eventually, after I ask enough questions, is that brick wall is gone, they trust me. It's a similar reason why when you do an application, what's one of the very last pieces of information that you gather? The social security number. Okay. Why? It's because if you ask for it up front, hey, 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 we just started talking. But 15 minutes later, they're just handed out without even asking any questions, right? It's because you've developed the rapport with them by asking them questions. And so we're doing the same thing here. So the building the rapport sets up the value part. Most people, when it comes to a sales thing, they will skip the rapport or do it very quickly. You know, hey, how are you doing? Don't really even really mean it. They'll get into what they consider the value part, which is really more them puking on and how awesome they are and all the things that they can do. That's not the way we approach it. So how do we build a rapport? Some people are really natural at this. This is not one of my natural things. And so all of us can uh, be intentional with it. And the thing is you got to be intentional with it is the key is just to go deeper. And there's not any sort of 
magic questions you you can ask. Some people will say, "Go, you know, you know, uh, the Ford model of family, occupation, rec- recreations, dreams." It's uh, you can do that. I, mean, I don't have any problem with that. But at the end of the day, whatever you ask or what ask them, go deeper. So, for instance, if I were to say, "Hey, John, I know, hey, hey great meeting with you. How was your weekend?" John's probably going to say something very bland. It was nice. That's how what most people would end with the rapport, right? They just end it there. But me, I'm going to go deeper. Oh, that's great. It was nice. What did you guys end up doing? Now I'm opening it up a little bit more. Oh, I took my family to go see the opening day of, of you know, the Cleveland Indians or something like that. Whatever. Oh, that's awesome. How do you think they're going to do this year? Blah, 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 blah. And what eventually happens as you start to pull in that thread, it starts to unravel quickly or things start to open up and then – their response is instead of one or two words, it gets longer and longer and longer. And you might find yourself in some connection that you have or take interest in what they're doing. Like if John starts talking about how he, you know, rides horses, I don't ride horses, but you know, I don't know if you do, John, just, just throwing it out there. I could take an interest in it and learn, learning about that and ask questions and come from a place of sincerely wanting to learn about people. If you put people before profits, profits come. And so the rapport is going to allow us to do this. Now, how long should you do rapport for? I will tell you, I've had many meetings where in a 30-minute meeting, 29 minutes of it was rapport. I've even had it where the entire time was rapport. We didn't get any of the business talk on there. And that's the simple thing is we just schedule a follow-up meeting. Hey, we, I know we didn't get to this, but can we just get another 15 minutes tomorrow or later today? No big deal. You can't lose when you develop the rapport. And if that means you have to go into a second meeting because he did it, that's totally fine. But don't leave without that second meeting planned. But generally, it's not going to be that long. But for most people, you're going to push it a little bit more than what you initially feel comfortable with. Now, some people, they're completely comfortable with it no matter what, and they could just do it. For me, I'm not that person. To me, it's like, uh, push a little bit deeper. If you go a little overboard, that's okay. You will learn the more you do this, the, the more efficient and the better the feel that you get. Okay? Now, one thing that I recommend you guys also do in your meeting is during this rapport section is take note of something during the conversation, put it into the CRM, and then reference it the next time you talk with them. So if they say that, yeah, I'm, I'm going to – such and such a place and be gone for a week or whatever, a few days. Next time you talk with them, hey, how did it go wherever you, in the place that you went? Or they talk about their kid and how they have a big dance recital. Hey, how did your kid's dance recital go? You're, and then next time you talk with them, take another piece. You're going to link your conversation together. This is important because this is what friends do. You know, friends ask their friends, hey, how did that thing go that, you, that we were talking about the other week on it? So that's one thing that you, uh, that's a, we we'll call that a second level of things to do, but I recommend that you do that. Also forces you to slow down, pay attention, and listen. Now, once I've gone through the initial rapport part, I want to transition to the business part. And some people want to kind of blend it too much together. I like to have it a little bit distinct because it slightly changes their frame of mind a little bit. And not in a bad way, uh, but it gets them a little bit more focused on what we're going to talk about next. And I want this. I, I, I want this. And so it might be a fun and all this, but I'm going to go to, when I say serious, it's not like I, I'm cold and calculated, but it's, it's a little bit more serious in, in a way. So I might say something along the lines, there's no one way to do this. You know, hey, I didn't realize we've been talking this long. You know, like, shoot, geez, it's been 20 minutes already. Would you want to kind of transition to just talk a little business talk? Sure. Or like, hey, I really appreciate you sharing everything. You know, it's awesome. I hear, we, you know, you know, both baseball fans, that's, that's awesome. And both a lot of suffering through all the years of our team sucking and all that, whatever. Uh, but you want to talk some business stuff? Whatever. Some sort of way to transition it. Now, once we go from the rapport, here's where the meat and potatoes for what most people think of a, a sales uh, sales meeting. And this is the value part. So people keep doing this. So one is people do business with people they like. But they keep doing business with you because you're good at what you do and solve problems that they have. So the whole point of what we want to do during this section is to uncover one of two things. Pains they're experiencing in their business they want to get rid of and or desires they have for their business they want to achieve. Now, of these two, 
pains or desires, which of these two will people take more immediate action to resolve, to get rid of a pain or to achieve a desired result? Get rid of the pain. To get rid of the pain, exactly. And so our focus should be to try to uncover pain points. And remember, they're, they're meeting with you. They're meeting with you for a reason. So they might play that all is good and dandy, but they, at the end of the day, they agree to take time out of their busy day to meet with you. So what we want to do is we want to uncover pains or desires, but ideally pains in their business. And we might uncover 10 of them, but we do not want to solve all 10. We want to solve one or two. I did just focus on one and save the second one to a different time. And the ones that we want to solve are the ones that I'm able to scale, meaning that I can do it with lots of realtors. Because there are some things that you could solve, but you can't do it with many realtors. Like, let's say the realtor has, hey, I have so many leads coming in, but I can't follow up all the, all the leads that are coming in. Well, you could solve that, but like, I'll call them. I mean, that would be a solution, right? But can you do that with lots of realtors? You can't. Not unless you go hire a calling team and all that stuff, but we won't even get into that. So you want to solve problems that you can do with all of your realtors. It's scalable. And the good news is majority of realtors have the same few problems and our protocols are very scalable, which we, we will get into. Another thing is, as they are talking about their pains and you're uncovering them, do not solve them immediately. If they say, hey, I'm so frustrated with loan officers that never call, on the, call me back on the weekends. Hey, I'll call you back on the weekends. Don't do that. We don't want to do that. We want to get them to puke everything out you know, get everything out, you know, is when you puke, you feel a little bit better, right? And they're kind of gross, but you feel a little bit better. And then you're in a better spot to receive, you know, receive after you've gotten it out of your system. Now, also, as you're going through this is your goal is to understand. It is not to interrogate them with questions. Yes, you're going to ask them lots of questions, but you're not interrogating them. You want to understand. So it's important to, as you ask questions, focus on your tonality because I can ask the question this way, how long have you been doing this? Or I could say, you know, it, 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 James, you know, how long have you been selling real estate? Same question, different tonality. One is interrogating, one is having a conversation, right? And so, and whatever their responses are, we want to go deeper. And just like the rapport part. Now, as we're looking at this, I have a few warm-up questions that are good to ask so long as you go deeper with it. You're like, hey, no, how long you been doing this? Great. This is probably one of the best ones because realtors love sharing this because almost every single realtor has a story and how they got into real estate. There's not too many of them that, you know, it's, that was their lifelong dream. So how did you get into real estate? You know, and then how did you, how, you know, it's awesome. You know, you've been doing real well. You know, how are you generating your business currently? I'm doing mailers. I, I cold call Fizbo's or whatever it is they're doing. This also helps you to understand their work ethic, work ethic the things that they do, um, potential other opportunities that they might have. Now we're getting into the tougher questions. And I say tough, they're not like they're tough questions, uh, but these are questions that if you ask them too early, you may not get an answer at all, or you may get a, a dishonest answer. But since we've developed the rapport, We've asked these other questions. They're going to be much more open to share honestly with me. So I'm going to ask a question. Now, Ralph, let me ask you this. You know, what would you say are the two or three biggest frustrations you encounter when working with loan officers? Notice even how I said that, my tonality and how I emphasize different things. It's because that's how we should talk. We don't want to interrogate. Now, whatever Ralph were to say in this case, those are his biggest pain points likely. And if I can solve those pain points, and one, I have to want to, because it might not be pains that I want to solve, but if I can solve those, I have a large, high degree of getting their business. Now, the, another way I'll ask that question, and I'll sometimes even ask that immediately after this one, because it gets people to think in a different way, is I'll ask this. Now, if you could change any two or three things about working with the loan officer, what would you change? Now, the things they want changed likely means these are things they are not getting. And they want to get. And if you're able to do it, you're likely going to have a um, to get their business. Then I might ask, you know, is you know, okay, awesome. And, and what lenders are you typically working with? Great, awesome. You know, and you know, it's talk about goals. You know, is there? You know, you closed 24 last year. Are you looking to close that much this year? Are you looking to do more? Awesome. And you know, what would help you get there? You know, and what prevents you from getting there? 
right? That, that these are things to uncover also the desires. So I'm taking notes. I'm writing these things down. I might have a list of things. I might ask some questions that they might say is, you know, what are some of the biggest pr- uh, pains that you have with loan officers is, you know, say, I, I don't ever know what's going on. You know, like, what do you mean? Can you, could you uh, elaborate more on that? Yeah, I'm having to call them up to try to get an update on the file. They don't call me back, or if they do, it's the next day, or they send me an email late at night, and there's really not any answers. And I'm always constantly trying to figure out what's going on. It seems like most of my day is figured out what's going on with my deals. Got it. Thank you for, for, for helping me understand that. You know, or, you know, can you talk about the lack of communication you know, they're, they're, uh, from loan officers? You know, can you explain? I'll just make sure I understand exactly what you mean. Yeah, it's like, you know, I can reach them during, you know, during the day. But hey, once five o'clock happens is uh, they're nowhere to be found or God forbid it's a Sunday or a Saturday and I can't ever get a hold of them to ask them a simple question. Great. These are things that I want to know because what I'm going to do now, once I get all this stuff, I'm going to pick one or two things and I'm going to address those. And largely what I wanted to address are the things that have to do with communication. Because those are things that we can easily control. And our systems are, and, and things are set up to make that easier for you guys too. But here's what I want to do. I want to address that. So I'm going to say something along these lines. I want to get permission. So thank you for sharing all that with me. You know, I really appreciate it. It's very helpful for me to understand, you know, what, what you're experiencing, what you like, what you don't like. Now, is it all right if I address one or two of these things that you mentioned? I want to get their permission to do so. They're going to say yes. Great. Well, you mentioned... One of the things that you mentioned is that you constantly has, uh, have to ask for updates to find out what's going on with your file. You don't hear for weeks and you don't know what's going on, right? But he, here's what I do. Every Tuesday and Friday, I pick up my phone. I call you, you're the buyer, and the listing agent and give them an update, exact update where we're at in the file. Good, bad, or ugly. Hopefully there's not any bad or ugly on there, but I don't hide. So you will know every single week, exactly what's going on with your file. And if there's something else that you need to know during, you know, that's not Tuesday, Friday, I'm going to let you know. Or you mentioned that you find it frustrating that you can't ever get a hold of a loan officer on, on, on Saturday. Well, here's the thing is, I understand that a loan officer can't just work banker's hours. And so I make myself available. And if I'm not going to be available for whatever reason, I'm going to let you know that ahead of time. Now, once I, I take their pain, I match my solution with it. I am going to ask them this. Now, would you and your, your, your buyers, you know, would, would you find it valuable if I did those Tuesday, uh, Tuesday and Friday status update calls? Yeah, absolutely. Once I get that yes, I have now hooked them. It is, should be easy sailing from here, but most people don't do that. But they have just admitted that they have a pain, you have the solution, they like your solution, and they find it valuable. So we go from the report of value, now the most natural thing to do next is to ask for the business. But what most people ask for the business, if they do it at all, you know, is they do it in a very bland, uh, kind of in passing way. It, and it's not even really an ask. It's like, you know, you know I'd love to work with you in the future. Yeah, that's great. That's not an ask. That's just being wimpy. We don't want to do that. Let me give you this analogy. If we don't ask, it's like a doctor. Is your, let's say you're going to, the, you go to visit your doctor and you have some ailment. And the doctor asks you lots of questions. And he goes, I know what the problem is. It's X, Y, Z. I'm certain of it. I have this prescription. Easy peasy. No side effects. You know, it'll, it'll fix it. And then after he says that to you, he just gets up out of the room and walks out doesn't offer you a prescription, doesn't say anything else, just leaves. You'd be like, what the heck is wrong with that doctor? I have a problem. He has a solution. He didn't even offer me to write a prescription. What's going on here? It's the same thing when we're not asking for the business. We've identified a pain. We provided the solution, and they confirmed they like our solution and find it valuable. And so I'm going to ask directly for the business. I'm going to say, hey, I'm super glad to hear that, Ralph, that that you would appreciate that. And I got to ask, who are you working with right now that I can prove to you that I do my Tuesday and Friday status update calls? Easy. I've earned the right to ask. I've gone through the rapport, the value, and now I do the ask. And they might say, you know what? 
I, I could give you know, so-and-so's name or, you know, I got nobody right now. I got a, the only client I have right now is under contract and they close in next week. Hey, no problem, Ralph. Could I get the opportunity with your next one? Yes. Awesome, man. I'm super excited for this opportunity. You know, I, I wanted, I'm looking forward to show you that I'm not just a talker. I walk my talk. You know, I really appreciate you taking the time to meet with me today. You know, what's really important to me is that communication. And we talk about communication is I like to stay in touch with those that I'm, that I'm working with. And I want you to know that I'm a resource for you. So if you have a client that is even committed to a different lender and that you have a mortgage question, you can't get a hold of that lender, ask me. Just reach out to ask me. I know I'm not going to get that deal. No big deal. I want to be of value to you. Now, how often are they going to actually do that? Very rare, right? But you making that offer there is something you can scale, something you can do, and you're bringing more value. So the ask becomes very natural, very simple, is if we do the value part. And the value part is not us puking out. It's us asking questions. What a lot of sales loan officers do. I've seen this in person. I've been at coffee shops and I've seen loan officers meeting with realtors. I've literally have seen this. And where they just start puking on all the things they can do. Hey, we are the largest broker in the country, which means we can do this. We can do this. We have this for the rates, blah, 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 blah. Who cares? Unless those are the specific things that matter to the realtor. And so asking questions is the key to the conversation. Whoever asks the questions controls the conversation. And you're able to ask questions to uncover pains they have in their business. So then in turn, you can provide a solution. And then what might, worst thing that happens is the pains they have, you don't have solutions for them. Or they're not solutions that you're willing to provide. And they're like, hey, I really appreciate your time. But what you're looking for is not something I'm, I'm able to do. So, uh, you know, I'd be happy to, to, to work with you, but those are not solutions that I can do. But I wish you the best, you know, and all that. If that happens, you have actually increased the likelihood you're going to get a deal from them because of your honesty. So that works for you too, right? And then you don't make a commitment to doing something that you can't do on scale or you're going to have to stop doing. So hopefully that this is very logical. You know, it's something that takes time. You see, there's not specific script, but it's got, you know, some key questions that you can ask or a variation of the questions. But if you remember rapport, value, and then a firm actual ask, you're going to be doing great because that's going to set you up for what we're going to be talking about tomorrow, which is our refining training and developing that relationship post meeting. Well, prospecting is the most important part. It's all the seed that you're planting. Refining is like the miracle grow that you're using, the tending the field, the de-weeding things and making things grow healthy. Now, what questions do you guys have for me regarding this particular part of it?